Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chua. Today, let's talk about Saha the Duncleosteus. Duncleosteus was an early huge fish that lived in the Devonian period from more than 400 million to 360 million years ago. It was a very impressive prehistoric fish. It had very large teeth. These were not real teeth, but specialized plates on its head. There had been many reconstruction versions of Duncleosteus, but it was only in recent years that people started to get a relatively clear understanding of its overall appearance. First, let's look at its head. When viewed from the front, the head appeared wide and had a pretty large mouth. The front of the mouth possessed large tooth-like structures. These were not real teeth, but specialized plates on its head. In terms of its mouth structure, public opinions are divergent. Some people think that the Duncleosteus mouth resembled that of lungfish. If you look at the skull of a lungfish, you will find that the lungfish also have similar teeth. But other people believe that the Duncleosteus was fundamentally different because it didn't have the same lip structure as lungfish. If it looked like a lungfish, it would have looked very cute and funny. It would have very thick lips and normally keep its teeth hidden inside. Some other scholars believe that the surface of the tooth-like plates didn't have a structure that could attach a large amount of flesh. And on the skulls of some of its close relatives, raised marks could be found on preserved plates. Therefore, we now generally support the earliest theory, which believed that the Duncleosteus head was covered by bony plates rather than thick skin. Its head was composed of several large plates, and there were gaps between these plates. The mouth of the Duncleosteus had several joints. First of all, there was a joint in the lower jaw, and another joint in this location, which differentiated the Duncleosteus from other animals that open and close their mouths relying on only one joint. A group of muscles below pulled its lower jaw, while a group of muscles above pulled the top of its head. When it opened or closed its mouth, these plates might co-move like the armors of the Transformers or Iron Man to form a linkage effect. That is to say, when it opened its mouth, it wasn't just the lower jaw that opened and closed, but the entire head would move up and down in both directions. This part had muscles. The muscles on this side grew diagonally toward the top, whereas the group of muscles below slanted downward. Between these two groups of muscles, there were gaps in which its gills might be hidden. Regarding the gills of Duncleosteus, no current fossil records are available, so reconstructions may vary. Our reconstruction was done as follows, it might have only one gill slit, that looked like a flat hole, which was a simple structure. In some reconstructions, the gills may resemble those of a shark, but our reconstruction is different. Before reconstructing the Duncleosteus, we talked to some ichthyologists, and they suggested that the gill slits of sharks evolved from a row of ribs, which explains why shark gills are in rows. But Duncleosteus obviously didn't have such features, because there was no trace of rib evolution around here. Its gills might just be a simple structure that evolved in the gaps between the head armor. Therefore, when we reconstructed the Duncleosteus, we made a gill slit along the gap and away from the muscles. It's a simple gill slit, but since it's a very large fish with a body length of over 6 meters, its gill slit might be very long so that it could get more oxygen. In addition, the dorsal and ventral sides of Duncleosteus featured huge plates, and the plate on the dorsal side extended all the way here to the back. One huge plate on its belly extended all the way here. Its belly plates were like the carapace of a tortoise, and at both ends of the belly armor were its fins. The shapes of the Duncleosteus fins have only recently been determined. Due to the lack of fossil records, early reconstructions were usually based on those of its close relatives. The fin bones of its close relatives were normally arranged in a circle. Therefore, in some early reconstructions of the Duncleosteus, its fins were made rounded, and people thought it was a slow-swimming animal. But with anatomical comparisons of modern fish over the years, it was found that the Duncleosteus fins might resemble those of sharks, which had a pointed crescent shape, and there was a small tail-like structure at the inside rear of the fins. So was its dorsal fin. 
for some early close relatives of Dunkleosteus, a round face was preserved on the dorsal fin. So in some early reconstructions of Dunkleosteus, including those in certain film and television works, the fin still looked rounded. But in recent years, through the comparison of living animals, it has been found that the base structure of shark fins was the same as that of Dunkleosteus. If so, Dunkleosteus might also have an upward-pointing triangular dorsal fin like that of a shark, which could be huge if enlarged in proportion to a shark's dorsal fin. But we didn't do that. Instead, we just made the dorsal fin look relatively short, a bit like that of a swordfish or a sailfish. Now, let's talk about its pelvic fins. Its pelvic fins also resemble those of a shark. Among the Dunkleosteus close relatives, some male individuals had to bony rods behind the pelvic fins, just like the mating organ of sharks. These to bony rods had one more joint than those of sharks, which could turn the direction. The same went for some of its close relatives. But when we were making this model, we adopted the appearance of a female shark, and didn't make the extra bony rods. Coming up is its anal fin. The anal fins of Dunkleosteus and its close relatives were more well-defined, with a square-like structure once found. It's very big like this. The location of the dorsal fin has also been controversial. There are not many complete fossils of Dunkleosteus, so it's very difficult to reconstruct it. Therefore, the overall arrangement of the Dunkleosteus fins was usually based on its many close relatives. Its close relatives varied in size and shape. Regarding the body shape of Dunkleosteus, some scholars believe that its body was very short, while the latest opinion suggested that its body was quite long and the dorsal fin was located rather toward the rear. Some of its smaller close relatives show their dorsal fins were located toward the front, while others might have dorsal fins located toward the rear, so, we can't be sure where exactly its dorsal fin might be located. However, based on the theory of Dunkleosteus having a long body, the dorsal fin might be located toward the rear. Now, let's talk about its tail. In early reconstructions, the tail often made resemble that of an eel. But in recent years, it has been found that there was a tail bend structure here, similar to that of sharks or ichthyosaurs. So today we know that the Dunkleosteus tail looked more like that of a shark, which was a heterocercal tail. If this is the case, it means that the Dunkleosteus was a decent swimmer. After all, its teeth also showed that it was a skilled predator. People used to think that it only preyed on slow swimming shellfish and would bite and open the shells with its big mouth. Now we think it was like a powerful hunting machine with great mobility in the sea. Then, about the color of Dunkleosteus. Strictly speaking, there is no fossil evidence, but it had many close relatives. For example, one close relative that lived at the bottom of the ocean had a small body and had the pigment found on its body. The pigment proved that its belly was silver, similar to most fish today. Its body and back were red, and this color scheme was directly adopted in some reconstructions of the Dunkleosteus. But we didn't use red for its back this time, because Dunkleosteus obviously didn't live at the bottom of the ocean, where it must disguise itself as sand. Instead, it was a fast swimmer. Based on its body shape and behavior, we took the tiger shark as a reference to reconstruct its body black with some spots, but for the belly, we still used this color. Good. The above concludes our introduction of Zaha the Dunkleosteus.